Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Eric with Ham Radio Concepts, or you may be checking me out on the Ponderosa, my other channel, links in the description below. Listen, everybody loves American made, made in the USA. Well, there's a big difference in a made in the USA RF silent solar charge controller and a charge controller from Amazon that was made in China. Now, that Amazon charge controller works well to keep my solar panels and my off-grid RV running my air conditioner off-grid and everything. But when it comes to using a, a ham radio in the field, forget it. It blanks it out. I'm going to show you what that looks like on my scope when I got the solar running on the RV. So today I want to show you a couple things here. These are two of the models from Genesun that Gigaparts had sent me to play with and I have to send them back. These are the Genesun GV5 for traditional lead acid batteries. Uh, maximum 65 watt for the input from the panel, charging at 5 amps, and the GV5 lithium for lithium iron phosphate, such as my bio and a battery like I have here that I use for my uh, radios in the field. This is lithium iron phosphate, 12 volt, 12 amp hour battery, max continuous of 20 amps. Now, my ICOM 705 uh, will not even draw 5 amps at 10 watts. So, uh, this will keep it in a, in a solar situation. I can keep this battery running, uh, charging all day long with a field portable solar panel and have no RF hash. Okay. The thing about these again, made in the USA, very simple, but they're the, the technology of what they've done with this MPPT solar charge controller and how they made it RF silent is the key on being able to use low power digital modes or stuff like JT8 or JS8 call or FT8, FT4. If you got a noise floor that's way up from your solar, forget it. You won't decode any of those stations. And sometimes you get these nasty washout birdies on the waterfall and forget it. It always happens to be right at 28400 or 28405. I'll hear some DX coming in on 10 meters, wipes it right out. Something like this, what I've seen testing out my 45 watt panel out back, really clean. I can't detect any noise on my 705 uh, other than the noise I have from my cameras and, and whatever else is running my pool pump, the Wi-Fi routers and all that stuff in the house, uh, I can't really detect any difference running these in front of the 705. So let's take a walk out to the RV real quick with my 705 and I want to show you what it looks like when the charge controller is on and when it's off. Look how much noise that China controller makes. And for video's sake, <clears throat> I have this wire here loose so I can just pull it out, pull the solar array off. Look at the noise, right? And if you have a resonant antenna like a delta loop or a wire or something, forget it. It looks like this. Right? And it slightly moves up and down. But if you want to run the span out on this 705, watch this. We'll go to 500 kilohertz on each side. Okay, look at the look at the noise. That's across the, almost the entire band. And that's on all of them. Here's 40 meters. Here's 17 meters, 17, it's bad, it's bad, okay? Okay, so watch this, ready? Watch this. Noise is gone, okay? Put it back in, now watch. Turns on, detects the batteries, and then it'll fire up it, there it is, okay? That is coming from the the way these are built, this is from China, yes, okay, and um, although I did get it for the high current demand that I could use, you know, 72 uh, volts and be able to charge at about 60 amps max, that's why I picked that one, but I'm sure there's better solutions out there that are RF silent, unfortunately, this one here makes it impossible to use ham radio if you have this running, okay, and the noise is detectable way far away. Watch this. Yeah. I don't even have to be right up on it, see? Eh? It's it pretty bad. So these are pretty simple and easy to use, okay? You have an input, like a, what do you call it, a Phoenix connector over here with the little flat head for the six inputs here. So you'd connect your solar panel up here, maximum 65 watts, maximum 27 volts. An average 12 volt solar panel open circuits like 22, 23 volts. Okay, sometimes they're 19, 18, sometimes they're 24, 25. Um, no blocking diodes to be used with this because it's already built in, okay? 
Uh, so it, it, you know, prevents the, uh, the discharge. And, and actually at nighttime, they say nighttime running with these overnight when there's no sun, you may lose a, a max current drain of 0 0.9 milliamps or 0 0.9 amps or 900 milliamps. So very low current draw, keeping that thing, you know, running overnight when there's nothing connected or there's no solar coming in. If your panel goes here, you have your battery, plus and minus, and um, 14.2 volts for the lithium version, okay? Because normally a BioNO fully charged is like uh, 14.2 volts. And for instance, the lead acid would be 12 volts because a normal lead acid battery is 12 volts, roughly 13, something like that. And your load. Now, I don't plan on using the load on this. Technically, you could run, you know, right off the load off this thing of five amps, but I'd rather tap right off the battery and use this just for um, charging the battery. There's an indicator light in the bottom. And the indicator light, very simple. If it's in standby, it'll blink once every eight to 10 seconds, green. If it's charging, it'll give you a fast blink every three seconds or two seconds. If it's full charge, it'll be solid green. That's all you really need to know. It'll tell you when it's charging, and if there's a problem, it goes red, okay? Um, the lead acid version is the same thing, all right? And they have other ones that do 10 amps and more for uh, you know, different lead acid and lithium. So we're gonna hook this up. I have my Samlex panel, and that's a 135 watt panel. So what I'm gonna do is close the two sides and just use one 45 watt panel. And I'm gonna run that to this one for the bio -NM. And then I'm gonna run the, uh, the other one to the lead acid. I'll put a current meter on it, just see what it's pumping in there. And um, see how much noise we have with my 705 right here. And actually, I won't use the BNC. I'm gonna, I'm gonna plug it into my Delta loop in the backyard so that this thing's hanging right over this solar charge controller and the battery. And we're gonna see if there's any noise detected from this. All right, so in the most unprofessional way, I could set this up out here today to do some HF. I have my 705 here, the bio -NO, the 705 is plugged into the bio -NO, and the bio -NO is being charged at the same time with the charge controller. It's just a temporary setup there. But that's a three, that's a three panel uh, solar panel folded up because I only want to use 45 watts. If I put two on there, it'll burn the controller out too much uh, input. And I have my, uh, this has been sitting out here for a while, my Delta Loop, Chameleon Delta Loop, hanging up out there. And actually, guys, just an update, it's been sitting out here about two months since I did that video, three months. Looking great, no rust, fine. Still tuned, I mean, it's still tuned in multiple bands, resonant, whatever. So here's what I have. Okay, I'll give you a little thing here. Ugh. Listen to 10 meters, because normally 10 meters shows a lot of noise now the birdies on here that are there already those are coming from something in my house somewhere they're like every 12 megahertz or 12 kilohertz 378 for uh, 30 kilohertz man. yeah right don't know what that's from anyways normally you would see a really harsh wave all over the place on here. And I'm gonna show you because about 300 feet away is my RV, I'm gonna plug the solar back in. I'm gonna show you what kind of noise. But right now I am running on this charge controller. And if you see, and it's actually kind of cloudy, if you see the light there, watch. I don't know if you can see that. See, it's flashing green every about four seconds. See that? Every four seconds is flashing if the camera will pick it up. There it is. Three, four, five. Okay, so that means it's charging, okay? And actually there's, it's not full sunlight now. The uh, clouds decided to roll in again. I'm gonna go plug this RV in real quick and I want you to watch what happens. I'm gonna set it up in a tripod, run over there, plug it in. As I see right now, there is no solar noise on here from this controller. Now watch this.
Now already, you can see something that just developed over here. Now it's gone. There's one. That is coming from my RV on the opposite side of the yard. Hey, okay, another one. And that's only with the charge controller in the RV floating right now at about one amp, All right? There's 20 meters here charging at uh, 1.6 amps, 1.7. Seventeen. These, um, these gas car people, oh my god. These legacy uh, automakers, we could call them. Now, I'm going to leave this just the way it is, and I'm going to run over and turn the RV on again, and I'm going to show you what 80 meters looks like, 40 meters looks like. Watch this. All right, now, RV's on. Got a 40. Oh yeah, see? That's from my RV right there. Terrible. All right, it's from the RV. And, uh... The, uh, in the daytime, the 45 degree Scorpion sitting at a 45 degree will have almost two S units more, and uh, you know uh, your S units may be different than mine, but they could be anywhere from 6 dB or more for sure. Uh, setting at a 45 on 40 meters, the other bands uh, not so much, but uh, uh, that's something else you can do too. So uh, you've got the ingredients is there. Just keep working on it. Don't just discouraged because I said I finally pretty much uh, I know how to operate on 40 now and what I have to do to do it and uh, I found the uh, found the last problem here on the last trip and this this been I see I've got 70,000 miles on my on my truck now and I'm not putting them on I only drive to pull the RV pretty much uh, I use the other trucks for other things here to work with uh, but I, I think now I'm going to keep that truck uh, operational for vacations and RVing, and uh, I'm going to leave the equipment in there because I'd hate to go through another uh, uh, install like this. The 07s, the 08s, uh, the 010s like you had, those were, they just worked perfect. Uh, K-Zero UO. Okay, so not so technical by any means. I'm just trying to keep it simple. Here's in a nutshell. Um, the highest I've seen on that with the sun here in November was about 3.1 amps. Um, on that little panel and I have you know what I want to do is I want to get one of these for my foldable you know blanket here that I've used before in my QRP kit right global solar opens up I think it's a 65 watt panel when it's opened all the way um, the open circuits like 25 or 24 but I want to get one of those for this um, be on my wish list one day for my portable operations because that Samlex is a bit heavy. And, um, but the idea is this, a, and, and, and you don't have to hear this from me or anybody, nobody's, you know, they sent this to me to try it and uh, they said these are supposed to be really good. And uh, they are, they're, they're quiet, uh, very quiet, almost no noise at all from this thing. I can't detect any. Now, there's other people online like um, OHASTN, uh, -H Julian, who used one of these for a couple of these for over a year. Not one failure, zero noise. He does digital modes. He's used uh, FT8 and, and all those uh, FT8 call, and JS8 call, whatever. He uses power film solar panels out in the portable with these. And that video is a couple years back. I stumbled on that when I first started getting into solar last year. 
And um, he swears by these things. So a good solar charge controller will give you the maximum efficiency. You don't want to lose all your power, okay? Um, again, PWM pulse width modulated. Those are very noisy. They're very inefficient. They work to keep a fence post. You know, if you've got a, a gate in your driveway that's got a solar panel and the motor, that's good for that. That's about it. And guess what? If that's in your yard and you got ham radio, you're going to hear that noise. So uh, if you're not a ham and you've got a light post at the end of the road to solar, maybe that's good. But a PWN charge controller, it takes all the solar in, it'll charge with just what it needs, and the rest gets wasted. This MPPT, all MPPTs, will determine how much extra voltage there is and how much you know, uh, it, it needs to charge and to flow and, and maximum power point tracking. So it, it's actually got circuitry in here to keep your batteries to, uh, to mo most efficiently use the solar you got coming into your panels and charge your batteries and not waste anything, okay? And this one just seems to be very quiet and it's made in the USA. So my next endeavor is to figure out how to fix or get a different charge controller that will do 60 amps that will do up to 100 volts of solar. So I can run it at 72, which is usually when it's fully charged and floating, it's like 83 volts coming in. But I need to be able to charge at 60 volts or 60 amps. And was, again, that MPPT, I run my panels at 72 volts. My battery plant's 24 volts. So you'll see coming in will be 74 volts at five amps or whatever. And I'm charging at 24 volts at like 15 amps. It's taking all the extra voltage, turning it into amperage, you know. So that's really um, beneficial for me so that I don't have to, you know, if I get a little cloud coverage, it, it still charges just fine. So thanks for watching. More videos are on the way. Um, I got, wow, several other things to work on. Check this out at gigaparts.com. I'm sending these back. And um, neat by Genesun. 7-3, KJ4YZI. Ham Radio Concepts is brought to you by HamRadioPrep.com. It's never been easier to learn about Ham Radio before you take the exam. And Ham Radio Prep makes it fun and guarantees your success. Visit HamRadioPrep.com. Use the code ERIC20 to instantly save 20% off every course you buy. Remember the name, HamRadioPrep.com.